So you're live. So I guess it's connected. Let's see what's going on here. Is it working? We have one, one viewer. viewer. A whole one viewer. Don't mind if I do. Let's see who's in chat, if anybody. A whole one viewer. Oh, it must be live. Don't mind if I do. Let's see who's in it's chat. an encore presentation. <laughs> Oh, it must be live. Don't mind if I do. I just wondered if there was a way to be able to switch it from front to back camera. I guess. I just wondered if there was a way to be able to switch it from front. Don't mind if I do. Let's see who's in chat. I don't know. Maybe, Maybe not. Exit okay. solo layout. More. Hmm. Settings? Camera? Oh, yeah, there you go. So maybe. Oh, geez. Oh, wow. You get to choose from all those. Uh, Just try back camera. Okay. So if you want to show anybody where you are. Lots and lots of lights. Teleprompter, very small and hard to read. All right. <laughs> we'll uh, do that. We have four viewers now. Goodness, four people are online watching the behind the scenes as we get ready to record on the green screen. Yeah, so you can have fun backgrounds or you can have boring backgrounds if you want. You could just have uh, like beige drapes or something. Are you able to see chat and stuff? No, it says something went wrong. Um, but there's... EV Pulse commenting on the stream yard at least. So I don't know how any of that works. And I don't know how I can go. Oh, Gorski C. Gorskik, as I would always say. <laughs> Hi. Ahoy, yes. Good to see you. So YouTube comments are coming through there? I, I like. guess, yeah. They're not coming up on the YouTube feed. When I hit show chat, it just shows the monkey with the Did hammer. You try refreshing the page. It's there. It's still something went wrong, so what the hell? we can always try another interweb browser. Whoops. Let's try another web browser. Live EV Pulse. Live stream. There we go. It works not signed in as EV Pulse, hmm. but it is also appearing to show comments here. So that's a good thing. I just don't know if it. Dang. All right. Well, can Greg, you removed yourself oh. from the stage. You removed yourself from the stage. So I put you back. I How? Put you back up there. I, even... I, I don't know. I'm gonna stay in. I'll Go stay ahead. in the. Uh, uh, Gorski just said failhorn. Um, I am going to. <laughs> I'm gonna stay in Streamyard and sort of manage the chats there. The chat's working in Streamyard. I don't know if it's working on YouTube. It's but working if you up... on YouTube, but not on our account. EV Pulse will not show it. So when you're That's signed out, you're. Okay. And we have Merko from Northern Germany joining nice. us as well. It's just like a roundabout reunion. It is. All right, I'm going roundabout. to finish getting things ready, and you guys, you can talk to the people. All right, so I guess solo. I'm going to try hitting solo layout and see what happens. And then if I exit solo layout, what does that do? It's all a mystery, folks. Solo layout. You're the only one in there, so solo layout's all the only option you have. See? Now if I can... Ah, now it's switched back to me. I don't want that. Anyways, I'm going to drop out. Just leave it. Figure it out and leave it. Yes. Okay. Have fun. Hi, everybody. Bye, everybody. <laughs> there we go. Back again. So, yes, if you're just joining us live, we're, I don't know, YouTube has some new stream thing. So, we're doing a behind the scenes on the green screen. So, everybody can watch as we record some future videos like and subscribe um and yeah so ben is just prepping uh a couple of the teleprompter scripts which 
let me see here if I switch here. No, it's camera. No, that's not it. That just turns the camera off. Where did it go? There was a setting. More. Well, gosh almighty, I've confused myself now. If I do that, no. Hmm. Well, I was going to try to switch the camera around, but I guess I can just turn the whole phone and you can see the camera and teleprompter and lots of darkness in the other corners of the basement studio here. So. And Hello, darkness. Hello, darkness, my old friend. That is correct. Um, uh, Mirko wants to know why you're not streaming on Truth Social. <laughs> Because I don't have any lies to tell. <laughs> <laughs> the Gorski said because they don't believe electricity is real. That's that's another good reason. <laughs> it's magic. It's not an elemental force or something. Oh, no. <clears throat> so this is, I'm going to try to stay like, Mike, can you hear me okay, Greg? Yes, you're coming through fine. All right, I'll try to feed some questions and stuff to you. Uh, somebody just asked why they can't cast this to their TV. Um, this is a new YouTube feature that shows up. The, this live stream should only show up um, for those in the shorts in the short shelf. Um, something entirely new that YouTube just launched uh, just recently. So we're trying it out. Craig has to film a bunch of green screen stuff today. So if you want behind the scenes of how videos like. Um, the granny, the grandpa video came <laughs> came to be without all the face tune that sort of makeup. Um, this will be your chance to do that. Uh, it's going to be really this. There's no real structure to this at all. Mercury says alternative facts. So mm -hmm. that's true. Well, alternative fact universe, universe <laughs> of alternative facts. So, yeah, we're going to hopefully record three prompter scripts here um, for future features. Future features, say that 10 times fast. Um, that will then, of course, be edited and published on to the EV Pulse channel, which you should already be familiar with if you're watching this. Is there, <laughs> Is there ever a real structure? <laughs> uh, we, ha we have rundowns. We, we had rundowns, but, you know, no, I mean, I mean, in Craig's defense, he would like structure. I mean, it just structure doesn't. Structure helps. Structure helps. And I suppose if the comments are showing up there, I probably don't need my surface open. So we can get that out of the way. We have no, 15 I... live viewers. Wow. Information, formative chaos is the best. Yeah, I can make comments and stuff pop up. So I'll just, I'll just run this back here for for a hot minute and handle some basic chat stuff and while chat. you and your big mug um prepare for let's see you should show people your big mug yes. i got that for craig one day i was like you know what his desk needs his big mug this isn't just a desk this <laughs> is the Ikea um, lag captain, it's called. <laughs> With the o optional adjustable, I believe they're called Olavs, the legs. So yeah, if you wanna, if you wanna set up a green screen studio, you can um, go to Ikea and I'm assuming they still sell the lag captain. So I guess you you could be a lag captain as well if your internet connection is really bad because you'll be lagging. So the big mug here, it is genuinely a large mug. That is definitely more than one serving of coffee. But what is in this it? case, it has a serving of, uh, of um, grommet and two AA batteries that are probably dead. But we just keep those here. I don't know why Ben keeps them here. Probably because he hasn't put them down the garbage disposal yet. That's how you're supposed to recycle batteries. Right. Isn't it? Yeah. And lithium, you're supposed to light that on fire. Of course. Of course. Um, really quick before we get anywhere else, do you still have the notification gone? Yes. That's on the little side table. I think we should torture the, I think we should torture the old roundabout folks by the. 
you know, backwards. I don't know how a gong is supposed to go, but. <laughs> there we go. How do you like them apples? And the chat went dead. Oh, wait. No, they're still there. No, Gorski C is asking if, if you're in New England, that's one serving of Dunk's iced coffee. <laughs> How many grams of sugar in the iced coffee? You go to Diet. Starbucks and people have like the um, double mocha latte chino with extra mayo. And it's like 300 grams of sugar. It's like the cup couldn't hold that much sugar, but somehow there is that much sugar in there. There's the too much sugar, folks. You're drinking too much sugar. The cupeth overfloweth. With sugar, yes, in this little With blanket. With the thing. sugar. So speaking of Starbucks, you just did a big old Starbucks run with Eileen Falkenberg Hall. We sure did. Did you, did you take your insulin pen along with you? <laughs> I bought it on the way since it's only $35 per serving now, right? Oh, that's right. Oh, yes. The that government is something. price cap, finally. Right. Let's see. We had Ben wants me to address some questions from the video that went out today. Seven <laughs> best EVs for senior citizens. I'm yes, gonna see if this is actually I'm gonna see if this is actually working on the short shelf because I'm not sure. So you address mm. that while I go investigate. So comments on our video that came out today, uh, which is the seven best EVs for senior citizens. Yes, some EVs are better for older folks than others. And we made it our mission with this video to find those out and share them with you, dear viewers. And if you are just joining us right now, this is a little experiment we're doing. It's sort of a behind the scenes look to test out one of YouTube's new live features. So I am in the green screen studio in our producer, Ben Sanders. Uh, basement here. We've got the lights. We've got the, the green screen itself here. And we are just seeing how this works. And and if you guys like what this what this is and what we're trying here, let us know. If you don't, if you prefer more traditional content, that's of course something that we can produce as well. But anyway, a um, few questions here from the video that came out today. Again, that's best EVs for seniors. Um, Muskrat 3291 says, Lawrence Welk? Wrong generation. That was our parents. I live in a 55 plus community and it's Grateful Dead music that you hear blaring from homes. I'm in my 70s and I drive the Hyundai Kona EV. Very happy with it. It's a very good EV as well. Most of the Hyundai ones are. And um, but yeah, I just pretty much wanted to say Lawrence Welk because it's so old fashioned and it makes me laugh. So. Mirko says 1909 Detroit Electric. Unfortunately, no, that did not make our list, sadly. Although that is potentially a good option for folks from <laughs> that period, if they're still around, which they probably aren't. Um, Grayson A says, I prefer the Genesis GV60, smaller than the GV80 and higher ride height, so easier to drive, park, and make lane changes. X Chop with two P's at the end, asks, why exclude VW ID4 made in the USA too? And that was a, that's a very good suggestion. Oh, pick me, pick me, pick me, Craig. You, Chad? Is it because the buttons uh, stuff are terrible on that? Those touch sensitive buttons in infotainment, it's terrible? I mean, that's part of it. It's just the 2023 model just is not a very good EV. There are better options out there. Yes, it's affordable. Yes, I think it looks very nice and it's comfortable, but there are, with the charging speeds and, and some of the interior features, the infotainment system, I think they're just better options out there. Not that it's an inherently bad choice. I rode, in, I rode in one in Chicago to get um, some pizza after the Tiki Bar. And um, it was pretty nice. Like, if you just want to be shuttled around in a car or whatever, it's not really exciting or entertaining or whatever, but it's just... It's a sub or it's a compact people carrier, I think. Um, I mean, really, what kind of lets it down is is the button control sort of stuff. I mm -hmm. don't, I can't see my mom, for example, getting super excited about having to work with those touch sensitive controls. So, mm -hmm. um, I do like that's built in the U.S. That should help with some tax credit in the future, and. Um, Supposedly, the button control interface infotainment has gotten better, 
we have mm -hmm. been we've been told by the Jillius himself that mm -hmm. um, we will get a 2024 updated model to to drive at some point once it shows up in the fleet. Um, mm -hmm. We will give it, and Craig, you will give it another proper proper once over um, to see how it works. But it's just it's so hard to argue with the eGMP cars, mm -hmm. and like you know the GV60. It's, it's it's a little too sporty, I think, for um, the type of. I mean, if you're into sporty, hey, it's okay. But it's designed to be the sporty one of the group. I think the electrified GV70. If you want to do a crossover um, mm -hmm. as an old as a quote unquote old man's car, um, mm -hmm. I think that's probably the better way to go. Because I felt like a very opulent old man driving it. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. But it doesn't have the same range as the as the sedan, which yes. Turns out sedans get better range than e or crossovers. Funny um, that. Um, How does that work? <laughs> um, Merker also says the ID4 almost has normal door handles. Almost. Almost. Has almost yeah, they're, almost. They're, a, they're an indent with an E switch, I believe, on the back side. And you can open them that way. Yeah. Which is also probably more complicated than it needs to be, but. Every EV has to have a weird door handle. I think that seems to be that is that is what, the rule. You have to have, yeah, allegedly that it makes an, enough difference on aero to not have I, just. The door I mean, yes, I'm sure it makes does something, but is it worth the hassle? Probably not. No, no. BTC nine oh nine commented on our seniors video. Was Roman the inspiration for this video? And I only. Can assume that he's mentioning uh, referring to Roman Micah. I'm I'm he's, guessing that the he's DFL he's 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 my Roman Empire channels. He's what? He's my Roman Empire. Mm hmm. And he's is he grumpy, Chad? Would you describe Roman as grumpy? I believe that, I I believe that on TFL EV, a channel that I monitor competitively mm. on a regular mm. basis, Roman likes to take the grumpy face look. I don't know if he's always grumpy. If over in TFL Carland, he's still grumpy McGrumpy pants, but mm -hmm. um, he he seems to be taking the grumpy old man approach, which I don't blame him because his son Tommy Micah is twenty seven, getting married very soon, so um, mm. he probably feels old. And I would also be I'm grumpy that Tommy's twenty seven, mm -hmm. and I have no relation to Tommy whatsoever, other than I remember. When he was 15, driving across um, uh, the Czech Republic with his dad in a Tatra, mm -hmm. and with the sheer look of terror on his face, because like this car, like, is it going to make it to the boat? Is they going to be able to bring it across the country? Um, yeah. So yeah. now he's now he's 27, getting married, and one of the nicest people that you could possibly ever meet. So mm -hmm. uh, at least in this business, most of us are jerks. So. Mm -hmm. Tommy, Tommy is a, lot a, of a, <laughs> a ray of a ray of sunshine. Um, Gork, Gorski says you don't need to reinvent the door handle. Yeah, here's the problem though. We did, and now we're reinventing the steering wheel. It's a squircle now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, who doesn't, who doesn't love a they squircle? Can't leave enough alone or a yolk. Something. Not an egg yolk. Not an egg yolk. Right. Um. What else? Are there any other questions? I should look that up and see. There's a comment on the seniors video from William Elkington 5430 that came in nine minutes ago. It is quite long. He says, I'm 73. This is pretty patronizing. We didn't intend it to be patronizing. We did have a little bit of fun. We tried to have a little bit of fun, but I could see where somebody might think it was insulting, even though that wasn't necessarily the goal. So, I mean, we, we patronize everybody. No, um, no, that's fair. We probably, I mean, does it come off that way? I don't know. Sort of some of the inspiration, though, like behind doing it is um, our EV Basics series, which is our 12 episode sort of education on like the real EV 101 how to sort of stuff. Um, the number one age demographic on that is 65 plus, and mm. over half of the viewers are over the age of 55. So mm. what that tells us is that there is a large segment of the population that are interested in EVs, and they want to know more about them in presumably a nonpartisan, politicized way, 
which is very difficult to find on the internet. So, um, mm -hmm. so you take part of that and, um, so we're like, okay, well, let's make some recommendations for somebody who may be a tiny bit older than I am, though I feel very old right now. <laughs> well, you are not so. 73 yet, Chad. So no. gird um, up your loins for more to come. <laughs> but William says, I'm 73. This is pretty patronizing. Again, we didn't intend that. Uh, perhaps more accurately, it is insulting to people with more than six decades of experience. There's little in the vehicles mentioned that suits them particularly to seniors. And mm, I would disagree. I would to not be in a senior, but um, yeah, I don't, I, I don't know. Driving a climbing a BMW i4 at mm -hmm. 73 years old with no experience whatsoever, and tell me what, yeah. and tell me what you think. Um, yeah. Somebody savvy enough to be on YouTube and comment probably knows a bit more about things. I than... mean, and that's something he mentions here. Remember, boomers were the folks who brought you what you call technology today. So computers on wheels are not alien concepts to people over 65. They are to my parents, who are both in their mm. lower 70s right now. My they don't also, even use cruise control. Yeah. So my mom maybe also, that skews it a little bit. My mom also a younger boomer. Yeah, probably <laughs> gets some of it, doesn't get all of it. Um, but, I mean, the fact remains that there are there is a boomer population that wants to learn more about this stuff. And it maybe this particular content isn't for that person. Maybe they already know what they're interested in or already what, what they're looking for. We can't make everything for everyone. I do apologize if somebody does take like personally insulted or feels like they're being patronized. Um, that isn't our goal. Um, mm -hmm. But he's not watching the stream to hear that either. So Probably not. Well, what are you going to do? I don't know. But maybe. he goes on to say that, you know, we invented technology. We're not completely foreign uh, when it comes to vehicles, uh, computers on wheels, yada, yada. You did not mention, what you didn't mention is room for the grandchildren. I did mention putting photos of your grandbabies on the dashboard. You did, but and we didn't talk about, as much about space. And, yeah, can, he's got to oftentimes haul the, the grandkids around. Then he mentions flood capable is a function that not many people think about, but that can come in handy over greater areas of the country as floods become more prevalent. I'm not sure what he well, means by that. You, I wouldn't well, want to drive any vehicles. Well, you shouldn't you shouldn't drive any vehicle through standing water. Um, that's safety. Uh, he, I mean, if you want to refer to the villages where you know, in mm -hmm. Florida, I mean, Florida is going to be underwater at some point. So, mm -hmm. um, what I will say is, yeah, we didn't talk as much about like rear seat space. I think that's a for sure concern, um, especially for people that need to haul around, you know, kids, whether they're whether they're the main kids or whether they're whether they're grandkids. Um, I would say what else? Um, I would. I wish this person would have figured out how to not, you know, make mortgages so expensive, or help with inflation, <laughs> or vote for something that you know benefits the people that aren't just them. But mm -hmm. that's going really political, and I apologize. Next question. Yeah. And he wraps up. Uh, he mentions the Teslas that I included as an honorable mention because they do have a lot of benefits even if I don't like some of the technology that are in those vehicles. But Teslas are fine, he says, but the company's dramatic price cuts lately show a callous disregard for any existing customers interested in preserving the value of their vehicles, as such a class certainly and particularly includes seniors, since, as you mentioned, seniors are not in a good position to replace lost asset value. If yeah, I think no, of anything that's... else, I'll let you know. Please do, William. We appreciate <laughs> your comment, even if um, you didn't necessarily like our video. What I, I one other thing I'll, I will throw out there though is uh, this year we're again doing an EV Pulse EV of the year, and basically the um, requirements to qualify is you have to be your MSRP has to be at one hundred and fifty percent or less than the average EV transaction price on January one, twenty twenty four, and this year that average transaction price was almost twenty grand cheaper, hmm. mostly almost entirely attributed to Elon lowering prices on <laughs> Tesla's because they set the pricing. So um, there is a lot of truth to the to Tesla killing resale, like yeah. really killing resale. Um, and Ford increasing lightning prices because F you. Oh, that, doesn't, that doesn't help at all. But um, yeah, they uh, hiked the price in the Model Y 
in Germany today, um, mm. Mirko said, after lowering it in January. Uh, the um, <laughs> They just dropped the Model Y $3,000 here. So depending on where you are, it's so Tesla pricing depends on where you are in the world at any given time. Um, uh, <laughs> well, what it just, it just wait till the end of the quarter. If you're going to buy a Tesla, always wait till the end of the quarter because they always have to improve, increase production to meet numbers and they always discount the crap out of things. If you get nothing from this live stream from me, then get that. Yes. Uh, alternative steering devices could include an Airbus style side stick. Or as Mirko mentions, a tiller, and I am all for tiller steering, hundred percent. Tiller steering is gives you a lot of interior space and and clear forward visibility. No steering wheel in the way to block your vision. So bring the Airbus, back tiller steering. The Airbus here, side here. stick. Airbus side stick. That is um. Uh, that's that's steer by wire. Long before it appeared in a car. Steer by wire mm -hmm. was on airplanes. Yes, sir. January ten thousand year old. Sounds like Ben's going to be finishing up the the scripts. Have to be formatted in a special way to work on the teleprompter inconvenient but it is what it is so he's wrapping that up he'll be down momentarily to get that started and the camera turned on and the microphone pack so join us for the ride if you are just jumping in the, into the live stream here we're doing a little bit of a behind the scenes we're going to be recording some uh green screen as you can see behind me on the green screen, we got lights. We got a light up there. All kinds of lights. Some features that'll go on the EV Pulse channel um, in the coming weeks, I imagine. I don't know what the exact schedule is, but we'll get these shot today. You can join us for that. YouTube has a new live streaming feature. I believe it's through the shorts section of the site. So that's kind of what we're testing out here. Um, and, of course, giving you guys a behind-the-scenes look at what kind of goes on when we're, we are recording features that we will edit at a later date. So thank you for joining us. And Atlanta asked if I, did I just fart? No, I did not. It might actually be, we have this, I don't know if I can show it. It's like this octopus. It's got three arms on it that works as a tripod and the camera's mounted on top. And you might've heard the, the, the rubber feet kind of rubbing on the table here. So no, unfortunately, I did not have any emissions. <laughs> there we go. So yes, hope you guys are enjoying the live stream. We're just waiting for Ben to come down, heavily hinting for Ben to come down with the scripts and microphone and microphone. So he doesn't have to go back up and get it again. He's yelling that he will be here soon. So, so let's see. Okay, we got a question. PF cutters. So next question, do you think driverless technology is any good for seniors? My parents also hate this testing of autonomous full self-driving crap. They're not safe. I would agree. Uh, it's still very early days for full autonomy. We have partially automated driving, of course, with Super Cruise you get in GM vehicles or Blue Cruise from Ford. I know Stellantis is working on a similar system. Uh, so we do have partially automated driving that <clears throat> does work very well. In my testing, Blue Cruise and Super Cruise are both pretty fantastic, but they only work on limited access divided highways right now. Um, so that is why. So that's the current state of, of the industry. And... I know companies, GM has, has said they're working on Ultra Cruise, which is going to be a much more useful um, uh, uh, autonomous technology. It's not Correction. out yet, and who knows when it will be. Correction. But they killed, they killed Ultra Cruise. Did they officially announce that? So there, I've heard rumors. 
So they may still incorporate the technology, but they're not going to call it Ultra Cruise. It's going to be, mm -hmm. it's just going to be some version of Super Cruise. Because <laughs> the branding matters. <laughs> well, at GM, it sure does. Yeah. Can I introduce so anyway, you to Ultium? Yeah. But the, the question from PF Cutters goes back to uh, full self-driving for seniors. In theory, yes, it would be fantastic because even somebody that maybe can't drive any longer could still get to their appointments, still get to the stores to go shopping or whatever. So full self-driving could be a fantastic technology. However, we're not there yet, and I don't know when we ever will be. Beyond that, giving seniors the confidence to use that technology, I think, is another hurdle because I know my parents refuse to even use conventional cruise control. They may be a complete outlier. Um, but education My and being able to use that. And and Ben's mom, he says she won't use cruise control either. So so there you go. I mean, yes, in theory, full autonomy would be fantastic for, for a lot of people, seniors, uh, folks that are disabled. They may not be able to drive either. It'd be great technology for them. But we're not there yet, and I don't know when we will be. Gorski C says, I would love to see someone try Super Cruise on I-93 in Boston. The dashboard would start flashing. Does not compute in red letters. I don't know. I've never driven on I-93 in Boston, so I don't know what that looks like. Is that the one that goes underground? I believe that's the Great Dig one. The Big Dig. The Big Dig. Atlanta says, I know a fart when I hear one and you farted. I, I'm sorry, I did not fart. I think it was just this, uh, this uh, tripod stand here. But I'll try harder <laughs> next time. Don't try it too hard. I don't want to replace it. <laughs> well, this is a vinyl covered seat, so okay. I think we'll be fine. You've got paper towel upstairs. <laughs> Gorski said, yeah, it's the, yeah. the big dig. The big dig. PF Stephen, Stephen wants to know if I'm and Ben are here. Um, I'm I'm the voice of uh, the internet, and Ben is over there. I'm over there. Doing whatever with, he's doing. Super Mario Brothers shirt on. Yes. Apparently, I just introduced somebody. Oh, I introduced introduced Brett Evans to uh, the uh, Peaches song on oh. the EV9 drive. I was like, "Have you heard the Peaches song?" And he was like, "The President of the United States." I said, "No." Hmm. Um, the <laughs> um, uh, the one from the Super Mario Brothers movie, and he said no, and I played it for him, and it then got stuck in his head. That's how you adjust the. Yeah, I figured that. Oh, out. you did. Oh, okay. I just didn't engage it. Gotcha. The teaches of teaches. Oops, I dropped the mic pack. Do, 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 do. Need water, Craig? I'm fine for now, thanks. But uh, what was PF Cutters had a, an additional question? Something about should people should people learn to drive if vehicles are self driving? And I mean, it depends, I guess. If if we get to the point where there's no steering wheel in the car, there's not a lot to learn, right? You, there's nothing to drive. Although Craig. it's going to take a long time for the fleet to be completely yeah. flipped, right? Would you uh, would you build your dreams, Craig? <laughs> no, I don't have any dreams. <laughs> Very simple. Um, PF Cutters wants to know if we would drive a BYD. Um, I'd try it. Yeah, I mean, I would I, certainly try it. I would certainly try it. Um, I am of the opinion, um, and I can say these things because you just think Craig's saying them because you can't see my face. But I am of the opinion that um, if no automaker wants to build a twenty-five thousand dollar or less EV in the United States. Then I'm of the opinion the Chinese should be allowed to try. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I know that. Well, I mean, there are already obviously Chinese built cars on sale here in the U.S., but um, there is a lot of sort of protectionism of the North American and European automakers by not allowing the Chinese in. Um, I think that that's okay um, to some extent, whatever. But if if the if the government would go around and actually ask all these automakers if they ever intend on building a twenty five thousand dollar EV, and the answer is no, 
then well they're just gonna lie and say yes well right no they would right that's the but um you know, if nobody wants to do it let let the chinese try they still have to pass us crash safety regulations and stuff like that um i've driven three chinese cars in my life three chinese market cars um one was okay one was not great and one was amazing hmm. which one was which um, the one that was okay was a Chinese market, uh, Terra, a Nissan Terra, mm -hmm. um, which I hope one day when they cancel it, I'll be able to write the story. Nissan creates the new X Terra, mm -hmm. um, because, you know, reasons. Um, and then, uh, the one that was not so great was like, I don't know, I remember it was a Sus Yang or something. I don't know. There was one in Michigan for, that I did some, um, paid advisory for. And I said I didn't care for it that much. And the mm. one that I drove was excellent was the Arc Fox, which of course is built by Magna. Um, mm -hmm. We don't sponsor this, but do sponsor content on our channel. However, at the end of the day, Magna still knows how to make cars. So I'm not surprised that the, the Arc Fox was pretty solid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, PF Cutters agrees with me and says that crash safety is no problem. Yeah, no, I, I'm... I'm sure they are well built and can crash well. I think that if you're going to get any pushback from consumers here in the U.S., um, the first question you have to answer is, are they safe? And you're going to have to be able to obviously prove that. So they should have no problems passing crash tests, but they do need to be crash tested. Mirko wants to know, Craig, why not some Stellantis? Why not? I don't. I didn't get a prescription from my doctor for Stellantis, so... <laughs> It's only, it's not over the counter yet. Uh, so for your friend Mirko, um, you know, we are getting the Fiat 500e um, with a 40 kilowatt battery for 150 miles of range. Um, it's obviously going to be a low volume car here and they're selling it in a very unique way here in North America. That's not like how they sell it in Europe. <laughs> or not um, selling it. We'll see. <laughs> or not selling it. Um, however, uh, the, the, we have, um, Mirko, I'm sure you can appreciate. Um, we here in North America like to overbuy, and that includes mm. the range of our vehicles. Um, I could probably get by with a 150 mile range EV, as could a lot of people, especially mm. if it's your second car, if it's just a, a work car. Um, however, it's uh, tough. Like it's, it's it's still a tough sell. I don't think we need to lug around 200 kilowatt hours of batteries like the the Escalade. Um, to to go 450 miles but consumers here seem to think that they do which of course drives up price it increases usage of natural materials blah 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 um mm -hmm. Mirka does point out this the ec3 is larger than the fiat 500 starts a lot lower um assuming that they can put it on a boat and send it over here for that um but i still don't Fiat has a real hard time in this country and Stellantis doesn't even want to sell us like possible, like the, the Avenger, the Jeep, the Jeep Avenger should be a no brainer. And yeah, I know. Yeah. And they're not doing it. So, um, power for your phone or anything? No, it's at 57. All right. Um, I might want to explain to you we're about to get started on the recording. So we're about to start recording on uh, the teleprompter here for, like I mentioned earlier, a few of the green screen based features that we like to publish on our channel. So if I do that, you can see we got all kinds of fun stuff over there and a lot of lens flare, apparently, <laughs> from these very bright and annoying lights that are undoubtedly destroying my vision. This is the J.J. Abrams Star Trek movie. Yeah. All the lens flare. Yeah. So that's the itty bitty prompter to read while blinded. I'll flip it's good it for you. Uh huh. I'm sure it is good. Do this. <clears throat> Make sure this will somehow fit on the table, I guess. Do, 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 do.
that should be okay there. But as far as my camera shot, mm -hmm. can it still see you okay? I think so. Yeah. Somehow, nineteen people are still watching this crap. Wow. Um, How is that even possible? Chad, we will need you to mute your mic during this record section. Yeah, I was already muted. Okay, so. cool. Just wanted to yep. let you know. And we can uh, take questions in between scripts. Okay, yeah, and I'll hang uh, out in the chat too. And Cool. Cool. Multi. Mall rated. Oh, there we go. Craig might, Craig might even address something if he looks over during a screw up or something and sees it in the chat. Mm -hmm. um, Want to do give me an audio check, Craig? Uh, battery pack creeps between two and a half. What impact do EVs have on the environment? Oh, that's a big question and a tough one to answer, but we'll tackle it in this video. Or maybe we won't. You'll have to see. What do we have here? Oh, Anka Antal sharing a bunch of what appear to be Romanian flags. Greetings. Hello. Thank you for tuning in. It is 10 p.m. and I should sleep, so I am hanging out on YouTube instead, of course, says Mirko. <laughs> and I think we all have that problem. <laughs> P.F. Cutters is asking why the Ford is not bringing the new Explorer EV to the U.S. That's a very good question. Because we already have an Explorer. And it's big. It's bigger. Everything's bigger in America. <clears throat> you almost ready, bud? Yep. I'm just turning my headphones down. The Dasha. Dacha. Dacia. Dacia. All right, I'm going to start rolling, Craig, gotcha. and I'm going to roll on your microphone. Your microphone should be rolling. I now. felt it buzz, yes. Give me one last uh, audio check, please. Check, check, one, two, testing, testing. What impact do EVs have on the environment? Ooh, that is a big question, a tough one to answer, but we'll tackle it in this video. Great. And Anka is a Romanian. So nice. welcome and thank you for joining us. We have we have fan singular all around the world. <laughs> Many people tuning in to our broadcast. We have folks in Boston, right? Gorski C. Mm -hmm. We have Mirko in northern Germany. We have another person now in Romania. I would have never guessed Romania. Coming to us from the Balkans. Greetings and thank you for joining us. I don't know what Ben is doing now. We're about to start recording, of course. Show that oh, yeah, yeah. From... We still have these kicking around, apparently. Your, some lovely Euro plates that Mirko sent these along when we were recording a podcast many, many years ago. He was one of our original... Oops, my mic pack fell. He was one of our original fan, singular, as I like to say. Um, but he sent those a very nice gift. Very thoughtful very of Very much so. Very thoughtful right. of him. Southern Denmark, actually, he'd like to. Oh, he's in Denmark to today. Okay, because he commutes <laughs> close enough. It, like the, the territory changed hands a few times, didn't it? Uh, and we also have Alan DeVries from, I'm assuming, Tomahawk, Alberta, Canada. Way up in the north. How's the winter up there? We have. We've been cheated out of winter this year, I think, here in the Detroit area. I agree. It's been very mild. We had like a 60 degree Fahrenheit day. I'm not sure what that is in, in non-freedom units, but it was very warm. But climate change and, isn't yeah. real, Craig. It isn't. It's just weather, Chad. It's just weather. Mirko would like to remind you that those license plates came in 2011, which yeah. was 12 years ago, 13 years ago? Something. It's math years ago. That's an enduring fanship. Yes. I like to think. <clears throat> well, Alan, thank you for joining us from Canada. Much appreciated. I am not sure where Tomahawk is, but that is a cool name in Alberta. We also have another fan, Dave Foley, right? He, yes. From he is Edmonton. from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Mm -hmm. 
I hear it's the bitumen capital of Canada. <laughs> Famous for its bitumen. One of my favorite words. <laughs> bitumen. You All right, you ready to get started, Craig? I guess so. All right, we're rolling. And uh, is your phone on? Well, I guess you... I get it. I don't know. Yeah. It's there. <clears throat> Okie dokie. All right. Whenever you're ready, Craig. Three, two, and one. What impact do EVs have on the environment? Oh, well, that's a big question and a tough one to answer, but we will tackle it in this video. And let's just do that again since I we will. Yeah. I did not just have a stroke. <laughs> I just tripped over my own. People time. are already getting the same I know, awards. Right? Yeah. Three, two, one. What impact do EVs have on the environment? Oh, well, that's a big question to answer and a tough one, but we will tackle it in this video. When it comes to reducing pollution and saving the planet, EVs are far and away cleaner than combustion powered cars and trucks, though they are far from perfect. There are numerous facets to the environmental impact EVs have. Many are positive though some, of course, are negative. And according to data from the U.S. Department of Energy, from a life cycle carbon emission standpoint, cradle to grave and well to wheels, a 2020 model year EV with 300 miles of real world range is expected to release the equivalent of about 206 grams of greenhouse gas carbon dioxide equivalents per mile driven, and that is a mouthful. In comparison, a 2020 model year small SUV with a conventional gasoline engine produces about 420 grams of CO2 equivalents per mile, more than twice as much as the electric. And keep in mind, those figures take into account the EV being charged by the US average power grid mix, which includes energy from all sources. So wind, solar, hydroelectric, and nuclear, as well as gas, and coal, among others. Similar research. I don't know if you want to say nuclear. Nuclear. George W. got in trouble. For okay, that well, we'll back it up then. To wherever you want me to pick. Want to just take that graph again? That's fine. In comparison. Three, two, one. In comparison, a 2020 model small SUV with a conventional gasoline engine produces about 420 grams of CO2 equivalents per mile more than twice as much as the electric. And keep in mind, those figures do take into account the EV being charged by the US average power grid mix, which includes energy from all sources. So wind, solar, hydroelectric, as well as nuclear, as well as natural gas. Did I say as well as well? Yes, you did. Okay, well, do it again. See, it's never perfect. That's what editing's for. Mm -hmm. In comparison, a 2020 model small SUV with a conventional gasoline engine produces about 420 grams of CO2 equivalents per mile, more than twice as much as the electric. And keep in mind, those figures take into account the EV being charged by the US average power grid mix, which includes energy from all sources. So wind, solar, hydroelectric, and nuclear, as well as natural gas, coal, and others. Now, similar research conducted by the Argonne National Lab mirrors the Department of Energy's findings when it comes to lifetime greenhouse gas pollution, ICE vehicles result in more than twice as many as EVs. Now, one area where electrics are considerably dirtier than combustion powered vehicles is manufacturing. It's estimated that creating an 80 kilowatt hour Tesla Model 3 lithium ion battery pack creates between two and a half and 16 metric tons of carbon emissions. Mining just one ton of hard rock lithium is estimated to release 15,000 metric tons of CO2. You have to extract the material, transport it, refine the stuff oftentimes in China. Then the lithium might get shipped across the ocean to a battery factory before finally being installed in a vehicle. There are big carbon emissions at every link in this chain. Now, the same is true of other materials like manganese, nickel, or even something as familiar as copper. Mining these substances is not clean, nor is the refining and transporting. Ditto for rare earth elements that are used in some electric motors. Similarly, there's an enormous human cost 
to all of this. Mining, for instance, can rely on child or even slave labor, plus ripping scarce elements from the earth also scars and pollutes the land. Anyway, in short, it's way dirtier to build an... A, a, you glitched out. Yeah, we got a um, reboot. Yeah, let's take it from similarly. Three, two, one. Similarly, there's an enormous human cost to all of this. Mining, for instance, can rely on child or even slave labor, plus ripping scarce elements from the earth also scars and pollutes the land. Anyway, in short, it's way dirtier to build an EV than an ICE vehicle, but electric powered cars and trucks are leaps and bounds cleaner to operate. And there's a giant yellow oh, box for some reason. It apparently didn't remove the highlight. Oh. Hang on. I don't know why that particular part is It's, doing it's that. impossible to read. Yes, I know. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's that right. is not high contrast. Mm -hmm. Please stand by, but I'm sitting. Is that allowed? We still have somehow kept 16 viewers. Why? <laughs> I mean, welcome, but also why? I put a comment up there for you, Craig. If I can see it, I don't. I think I have to change this in Word. Okay. I'll right back. You can. I'm going to stop recording. You can answer comments while. Uh... Edmund Bitumen Urs. Dash Urs. Um. Oh, I have it on the screen. Like I put it. Like I, I can't see that. It's too small. Oh. For some reason it won't let me. You just tell me what it is. It said Edmonton um, Bitten Bitumen Hyphen Urs. The Bitumen Urs. <laughs> uh, Alan also said that he said it's really cold up there in Alberta. But the yes, Tesla still I works. It would be. But the Tesla still works. So Teslas don't work in Chicago, apparently. But um... <laughs> the Chicago land area is geofenced. You can't use them, there, right? Yeah. Apparently. Yeah. You know. I see people sharing things. Look at all these EVs at these California chargers. I'm like, okay. Do did all of these people buy EVs and they don't have any level two charger at home because? That kind of sucks. Well, there like are you're people not that, getting the benefits of the yeah. EV. There are people that do. Um, I think that they should probably look at a hybrid instead. I mean, yes. that's sort of, that ends up being our kind of advice here. Um, one thing we are doing, we'll tease ahead. One thing we're doing here in a couple weeks is uh, we're going to make a car very, 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 very cold and see if it still works. So, um, So that'll be fun. Um, PF Cutter says, you know, it's it's pretty detrimental. If you look at life cycle, which Craig will talk about in this video some more, and something we've done about it before. If you look cradle to grave, the EV comes out ahead. But if you mm -hmm. only look at production, no, just we... production, the the EV doesn't win. So, um, but it is getting better, um, and it should be better. But because the the issue people forget about is that you're not. It's not just the burning of the gas or the diesel. It's the drilling for it, the extracting it, the pumping it, the refining it, then transporting that stuff to the gas station where you buy the shoving it. the corn in it. Or, or yeah, the, the ethanol as well, which turned out to be a bad idea. Not surprised, but yeah, a lot of, lot of carbon emissions along that chain as well. So let's see. Is it, Mirko says, is it more fun to hang out at Chargers in LA? It's warmer, more fun usually. than where? Denmark <laughs> or Detroit? Detroit Chargers aren't fun. Michigan ah, fun. but you Things see interesting work. stuff. You see interesting stuff at Detroit Chargers because mm -hmm. a lot of times it's it's engineers validating validation testing. So you see stuff way before you're supposed to see it. You don't get that in LA. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, fortunately. I don't know. Same thing in my neighborhood in Boston says Gorski C, or as I prefer to say, Gorskik. There's one charging station down the street, and it's always full, and it's always the same four or five cars, probably Chevrolet Volts. The charger is at an abandoned bank building. Okay. 
and putting a pole mounted charger is illegal for some reason in this state. Hmm. Still got our water. I'm fine, thanks. Well, they must be in a state of denial. I don't know. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh. Mirko says in Denmark, the charges are full of Danes, and Danes are even better at minding their own business than North Germans. <laughs> so apparently, not a lot going on. <laughs> I'm kind of I'm kind of with Mirko on this. I kind of just want to pull up to a charger and just do my thing. So so Mir Mirko is German. He lives in um, in northern Germany, Schleswig-Holstein, and he has a job with a Danish company. So he's commuting. I don't know a couple of days a week up to Denmark, and he'll end up like spending the night and then driving back home. Um, and he has an EV. He has a Tesla, so he'll he'll be able to supercharge, it, and the the trip works very well for him. Um, but it's funny. He was telling me that the company is is having him learn Danish, which is very difficult, apparently. The grammar is incredibly, if you thought German grammar was obtuse, and it can be, Danish is even worse, and the, and the counting of things and, and the word changes, whatever. So they're having him learn Danish, which is great. However, everybody just speaks English anyway, so it's kind of like, what's the point? The, the British won, I guess. <laughs> this is an American or whatever, or somebody from the UK or a Commonwealth country. You can just go anywhere in the world and just say, hi, excuse me, table for three, please. And they'll somehow be able to figure it out, right? And then Stefan Ogbach says, try counting in French. Yes, I've heard counting in French is very draconian, especially when you get to like 80 or 90, it's 420 plus something rather than just having a word for 80. But anyway, we got the prompter script fixed this time. Hopefully. I don't know, are we at the spot where we left I off? Believe, yeah, I believe so. I'll back up a little bit. So I'm gonna start recording. Buzz. Lightyear. Oh, it didn't take. All right, try again. No, no it did, it's red. It up for me, Craig. Get my focus again. Just make sure. Should be good to go. Um, I'm going to really start at anyway in short. Okay. Three, two, and one. Anyway, in short, it's way dirtier to build an EV than an ICE vehicle, but electric powered cars and trucks are leaps and bounds cleaner to operate. Also, it's important to note that things are getting cleaner as newer battery chemistries are adopted by more automakers, and these mixes replace problematic materials like nickel and especially cobalt. Another positive benefit of EVs is that they are better for air quality. Since you're not literally setting dead dinosaurs on fire, electrics produce no tailpipe emissions of any kind, no hydrocarbons, nitrogen oxides, particulates, and no carbon monoxide, which is always a fun one. Now, all that being said, yes, power plants that burn coal or natural gas will produce emissions, but it's probably far easier to control those at a single source rather than at millions of individual vehicle tailpipes. Individual, let's just do that. Yeah. Um, <coughs> <coughs> we'll take the previous anyway. graph too, if you well, want. You want to yeah, just do that. Process. Yeah, let's take it from there. Okay. <laughs> Three, two, one. Another positive benefit of EVs is that they are better. Should we be a positive benefit is redundant. Another benefit of EVs, I think we'll say. Mm, yeah, I three, agree. Three, two, and one. Another benefit, here we go. Another benefit of EVs is that they are better for air quality. Since you're not literally setting dead dinosaurs on fire, electrics produce no tailpipe emissions of any kind. No hydrocarbons, nitrogen oxides, particulates, and certainly no carbon monoxide. Now, all of that being said, yes, power plants that burn coal or natural gas will produce emissions, but it's far easier to control those at a single source rather than at millions of individual vehicles. Backing all this up, in 2023, the Keck School of Medicine at the University of Southern California released an interesting study. And Here's the gist of what they found. The team compared data on total zero emission vehicle registration, air pollution levels, and asthma-related emergency room visits across the state between 2013 to 2019. As ZEV adoption increased within a given zip code, local air pollution levels and emergency room visits dropped. And that is very good news. 
And why don't we read that again? Yeah. <clears throat> I know it'll be covered with the quote, but yeah. we're just going to do, we're going to do it live again. <clears throat> From backing this all up, or all this up. You got to back the script up. I can't really? see it. There we go. Three, two, and one. Backing all of this up, in 2023, the Keck School of Medicine at the University of Southern California released an interesting study, and here's the gist of what they found. The team compared data on total zero emissions vehicle registration, air pollution levels, and asthma-related emergency room visits across the state between 2013 to 2019. As ZEV adoption increased within a given zip code, local air pollution levels and emergency room visits dropped. And this is very good news, and it doesn't take many EVs to make a noticeable difference either. At the zip code level, researchers found that for every additional 20 zero emissions vehicles. You better just read through it, and then we'll come back. For every additional 20 zero emissions vehicles per 1,000 people, asthma-related emergency room visits were reduced by 3.2%. Got it. Does that I make think sense? so. Yeah, it does. Yeah. I wrote it. <laughs> well, I did yeah. change the it was confusing to me when I read it, so I swapped a couple words around, but three, two, one. That is very good news, and it doesn't take many EVs to make a noticeable difference. At the zip code level, researchers found that for every additional 20 zero emissions vehicles per 1,000 people, asthma-related emergency room visits were reduced by 3.2%. On the other hand, one more potential environmental downside to electrics is tire wear. Since they're generally heavier than comparable ICE vehicles and often have loads of immediate torque, EVs can burn through tires faster, creating loads of particulate pollution. According to a report from Imperial College London, globally, tires create some six million metric tons of wear waste annually, everything from visible pieces down to nanoparticles. As the world becomes more aware of micro um, I'll stick. Yeah. You say loads and loads. Do you want to take that again? I can, yeah. You, uh, I don't know if you want to replace it with something, because you say uh, they often have loads of immediate torque. EVs can burn through tires faster, creating loads of... Uh, sure, is tons of torque. Okay, so we'll uh, take it from on the other hand. On the other hand, one more potential environmental downside to electrics is tire wear, since they're generally heavier than comparable ICE vehicles and often have tons of immediate torque. EVs can burn through tires faster, creating loads of particulate pollution. According to a report from Imperial College London, globally, tires create some 6 million metric tons of wear waste annually, everything from visible pieces down to nanoparticles. As the world becomes more aware of microplastic pollution and the problems it causes, vehicle tires will likely get more scrutiny and potentially EVs as well, though, of course, ICE vehicles are not immune to this either. Next up, let's cover vehicle maintenance. With EVs, this is greatly reduced, which is a big benefit for the environment. There's no crankcase oil to change, leak, or dispose of, and you don't have to worry about dirty old filters either. EVs have no PCV valves, fuel injection systems, or emissions control hardware. I mean, the list goes on and on. Additionally, with regenerative braking, you greatly decrease wear and tear on the friction brakes, extending their lives and, of course, reducing particulate emissions because, remember, pads and rotors, shre shrews and drums. It was so close. So close. Um, additionally? About, yeah, from additionally. Additionally, with regenerative braking, you greatly decrease wear and tear on the friction brakes, extending their lives and, of course, reducing particulate emissions. Remember, pads and shoes, rotors and drums are wear items just like tires. And finally, recycling is another way EVs impact the environment. Right now, this is something of a mixed bag because there's no efficient, large-scale way to reclaim the materials found in end-of-life lithium-ion batteries. Smelting is how this has been done in the past, but it is not clean, and it destroys some of the precious materials that you're trying to reclaim. 
Fortunately, though, several companies are working on ways to cleanly and efficiently recycle lithium ion batteries and doing so in an economically viable way, which is very important as well. We're not quite there yet, but I suspect we will have a battery recycling breakthrough sooner than later once these companies really start scaling up. And there you have it. EVs are not perfect, nor are they a magic bullet solution to our transportation and environmental woes. Still, in many important ways, electrics are undeniably better for the environment than combustion-powered cars and trucks from a long-term perspective. And you know what? Maximizing your EV's battery life is not only good for you, it's good for the environment too. So click over here to learn how you can have a few simple tricks to, to do better, to make your EV better. Betterer. Actually. More betterer. More betterer. <laughs> the most betterest it can be. Do you want to take the concluding paragraph again, if too? If you want me to. And there you have it. Let's cut. Let's remove the and there you have it and just start with EVs are not perfect. Is that okay? That's fine. EVs are not perfect, nor are they a magic bullet solution to our transportation and environmental woes. Still, in many important ways, electrics are undeniably better for the environment than combustion-powered cars and trucks from a long-term perspective. And you know what? Maximizing your EV's battery life is not only good for you, it's good for the environment. So click over here to learn how a few simple tricks and behavior modifications can actually make a big difference. And did you change that, Ben? Yes. Yes. That's why I can't read it. Did you read it when I sent it to you? So you I did. all prepared? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you? <laughs> we could just do the end. We can do yeah. from, and you know what? Three, do you want to reword it at all? That's fine. Okay. And you know what? Maximizing your EV's battery life is not only good for you, it's good for the environment as well. So click here to learn how a few simple tricks and behavior modifications can actually make a big difference. There we go. Good with that? Mm-hmm. That'll okay. work for me. All right. I'm going to cut. And then you want to see if anyone has any questions or anything? Craig is um, always the preparedest. Uh, I try. Mirko would like to say he's sorry for all the line breaks in the chat. His laptop has a Danish keyboard, but it's set to a German layout, and he's typing in English. <laughs> Trilingual. Do you want to <clears throat> swap outfits? I'll, I'll, I'll change my this. shirt. Yeah, I'm okay. going to get the next script. So I will. We'll be right back. And enjoy this brief interlude. I will put it on something interesting for you to see the green screen. It's the only colorful thing around here. There we go. Are there any brand asset things to share? Um, <laughs> um, video clips. Oh, there's this countdown. I could oh, be like. Oh, I... Alexis, turn the basement on. <laughs> um, Was that thing on there, Craig? The That sign in dialogue? Were you trying to read around that? No. Oh, okay. That must have just popped up. Uh, can you turn the lights on down here so I don't try Oh, well. Just Alexa, turn music. the basement lights on. Sorry, everybody. Alexa, thank you. <clears throat> I did not say Lexus, Stefan. Stefan wants to know if you need food. He's good, Stefan. So the next script we have coming up for anybody watching live is tips for switching from a gas car to an EV. Um, just for PF cutters, Rivian is technically a mid-sized. It's a very large mid-sized truck. Um, not quite as large as a Jeep Gladiator, but um, which is also a very, very big mid-sized truck. Perhaps the biggest mid-sized truck. Um, but yeah. That would still fall in the metric ton mid-sized class here in the Estados Unidos. We also have a feature coming up comparing the Cybertruck 
to the Rivian R1T. I don't oh. know that that'll be included in this live stream. We may do that after because I still have to finish reading that script and Cyber make Charge. it a We can record that at another time. Okay. So it's not so late. But I have a question for Ben. Okay. <laughs> you have can Speaking of food. Clams. <laughs> How could you kill the baby clams? <laughs> Why do you have... Because I'm going to make clam chowder this week. You don't drink this? No, no. Okay. Sometimes, I mean, now sit at my desk and just, <laughs> just chop on up. some chopped clams. Mm. There's this. <laughs> Whole baby clams. <laughs> shucked. Right there. All shucked. You should advertise our, our cider. Oh, we've got. I mean, it's not available I know, for sale. That's all the better. It's more elite. Oh, that's true. Uh, do you want crab salad? <laughs> Pasteur's touch. Feral friend. There is a... So Craig and I, uh, with our friends for many years, have um, fermented cider. So we press ourselves. Apple cider. This is our, our main the flagship. Brew, the autumn amber. Cat hair on it. Oh, yes. Everything has cat hair on it. And uh, we were... Um, Quite a long time and getting around to labeling, which is why that says 2021. Oh, geez, was that the last time? <laughs> that's, when we, that's when we pressed the apples. Nice. The fermenting finished in 2022. You it ready, Craig? It takes a while to ferment, you know. <laughs> Say that again, Chad? It takes a while to ferment that stuff, you know. That's right. <laughs> yes. Well, the ferment is a couple months, right? A few months. We're doing Multiple. it for, we, we want to make it, you know. Extra special. Okay. All right. <clears throat> I'll get rid of that dialogue box. We've still entertained 13 people. Surprisingly. From all we've around actually, the world. We've actually entertained over 400 views so far. Wow. Hmm. Though, though, for what it's worth, the average view duration is only a minute and forty-five seconds. So they're coming in, That's but they a win. <laughs> but they, but they ain't sticking around. We have the super fans that still hang around. That's right. Do, 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 do. I dropped in the peer group that we're doing this. And uh, I said it's a little weird because it's showing up on desktop as a regular stream. Hmm. So I think we're getting some views from there. But every time I check on my phone, it's only showing up in the... Uh, um, it is showing up in the short speed like it's supposed to. So mm. I don't know. PF Cutters, what are your thoughts on the EV9? Um, I life. like it a lot. Um, are dealers marking it up? Probably. Do dealers suck most of the time? Um, <laughs> there are some reports, though, on the internet that some of the uh, um, EV9s are suffering from a 12-volt battery drain issue, which the Ionic 5 also suffered from from a while. So, um, yeah, it's just, it depends. Um, it's a very good car, though. Like, it is a car that I would absolutely buy if I needed three rows. But Are you I ready, Ben? Yes, you can't get many three-row EVs these days. And Spooky called you a zaddy. A zaddy? I don't know what that means. It sounds like something that. I would have to look Craig, on. you don't want to know. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> ben is right, you don't want to know. <laughs> All right. Okay, start. I'm just going <laughs> to leave it at that. I'm going to start recording. <clears throat> Quick audio check for me, Craig. Check, check, one, two. Testing, testing. Tips for switching from gas from a gas car to an EV. Just go buy one. Done. <laughs> Goodbye. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. If you're ready, I'm ready. All right, three, two, and one. EVs aren't perfect, but they do have a lot of significant benefits over combustion-powered vehicles. Electrics are cleaner, can easily be recharged at home, and they are way more efficient. You if you're finally ready to switch from... You skipped, you skipped a line. Did I? Or a word. Quieter, cleaner. Quieter. Okay. You skipped quieter. Ah. Three, two, one. EVs aren't perfect, but they do have a lot of significant benefits over combustion-powered vehicles. Electrics are quieter, 
cleaner, can easily be recharged at home, and they're way more efficient. If you're finally ready to switch from gas to electric, here are my top tips to make the transition as seamless as possible. Alrighty, my first two pointers have to do with actually getting a vehicle. So number one, if possible, you should grab an EV that's eligible for a tax credit. Specifically, in the US, this can save you up to $7,500 on a new electric car or as much as $4,000 on a used one. Now, unfortunately, not a lot of cars or trucks make the cut, but there are certainly some good options. And check out the description box down yonder for a link to the fueleconomy.gov website where you will find a comprehensive list. Next, when shopping for an EV, get one with the most range that you can reasonably afford. If one version of the model you like is rated at, say, 250 miles, and another will do more than 300, get the latter if possible. Having more range is never a bad thing and can be a lifesaver if you're on a trip and there's a big detour or if the weather is frigid, for instance. And that segues nicely into my next tip, Cold temperatures impact combustion-powered vehicles, reducing fuel economy and slowing how quickly. <laughs> no, no, no. Fuel econ- I feel I said fuel economy. <clears throat> um, how about from having more range? Having more range is never a bad thing and can be a lifesaver if you're on a long trip and there's a big detour or if the weather is frigid. And that segues nicely into my next tip, Cold temperatures impact combustion-powered vehicles, reducing fuel economy, and of course, slowing how quickly they warm up. But frosty conditions have a much bigger effect on EVs, significantly reducing range. Also, running the heater will eat into your drivable miles as well, so be aware of what cold weather does. And again, get an electric vehicle with as much range as you can afford. I'll tell you, old man winter can be a real prick. Now, aside from buying something that's eligible for a tax break, when shopping for an EV, make sure to check out how much insurance and registration will cost. Since they're newer, sometimes more difficult to service, and have incredibly expensive battery packs, insurance for EVs is often more expensive than comparable gas-powered vehicles. Now, similarly, your registration fees can often be higher. Usually, states pay for roads and infrastructure through the gasoline taxes built into the price at the pump. And since that's a non-starter with EVs, they charge owners extra money up front. Thanks, government. But offsetting those increased costs, electric vehicles require way less maintenance. There's no oil to change or transmissions to flush. Plus, with regenerative braking, your pads and rotors or shoes and drums, as the case may be, will last practically forever. And this is great news, but make sure to set some money aside for tires. Electrics tend to burn through them at a much faster rate with their heavy curb weights and instant torque. Another important factor to consider when switching to an EV is the cost of electricity and how that compares to gasoline. According to the U.S. Energy Information Administration, that's quite a name, The national average price of electricity in America last October, the most recent data I could find, was 16.21 cents per kilowatt hour. And of course, you'll be paying way more than that at DC stations. The charge point location near me, for instance, is 45 cents per kilowatt hour, almost three times as much. But anyway, let's do a little math, my least favorite subject in school. A gallon of gasoline is equivalent to about 33.7 kilowatt hours of electricity. So 33.7 times 16.21 cents is 546.28. And then if you divide that by 100, because of course there are 100 cents per dollar, we see that nationally electricity costs about $5.46 to get the same amount of energy as in a gallon of gasoline. On the surface, that's not really great because Once again, according to the Energy Information Administration, the average retail cost per gallon of regular grade gasoline in the U.S. last year was just $3.52, which is about 40 cents less than it was in 2022. But it is not all bad news, certainly not. Let's say you drive a 2024 Hyundai Ioniq 5, which has a 77.4 kilowatt hour battery. To completely recharge the pack, 
at 16.21 cents per kilowatt hour, it would cost you just $12.55 for up to 303 miles of range, the most you can get in an Ionic 5. Now, take a similarly sized gas powered vehicle, for instance, say a 2024 Honda CRV. It has a 14 gallon tank, and to fill this vehicle up at a cost of $3.52 a gallon, it's going to cost you $49.28. That's $36.73 more than to charge the battery of the Ionic 5. And we should probably do that last paragraph again. Yeah. Do you want to do all the number stuff again? Uh, uh, we I can. I don't feel I screwed up before that. But. Okay. Then why don't we take it? <clears throat> want to take it from it's not all bad? Sure. Okay. <clears throat> but it's not all bad news. Certainly not. Let's say you drive a 2024 Hyundai Ionic 5 with a 77.4 kilowatt hour battery. To completely recharge the pack at 16.21 cents per kilowatt hour, it would cost you just $12.55 for up to 303 miles of range, which of course is the most you can get in an Ionic 5. Now take a similarly sized gas powered vehicle, the 2024 Honda CRV, for instance. It has a 14 gallon tank and to fill that vehicle up at a cost of $3.52 a gallon, it would cost you $49.28. That's $36.73 more than to charge the battery of the Ionic 5. Next up, battery degradation is a thing, and just like your laptop or smartphone, over time, the maximum range your EV provides will slowly fall. It's important to be aware of this. <laughs> it is. It's important to be aware. Any comments? Uh, I don't know. Just they've they've sort of paused. Ah. They're they're watching the performance, oh. the screw up. <laughs> Drinking it in. Right. Savoring every bite. Eat it with a spoon. All right, you know, back it up. Uh, to next up. Uh, or we can go. Well, I mean, yeah, that's fine. Next up, battery We already, we already did the yeah. cost. Toys, next so. up is fine. Three, two, and one. Next up, battery degradation is a thing. Just like your laptop or smartphone, over time, the maximum range your EV provides will slowly fall. And it's important to be aware of this. However, I think the issue does get blown way out of proportion, as it's easy to deal with by capping how you fill the battery and being responsible with DC fast charging. Additionally, manufacturers typically offer eight or 10 year battery warranties that usually guarantee the pack will still provide about a 75% state of charge. That I completely misread that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Fun times. Yeah. Do you want this, where we were is fine. Where we were, the, the whatever the last, if you want all up. of that, yeah. Let's just try it. Three, two, and one. Next up, battery degradation is a thing. Just like your laptop or smartphone, over time, the maximum range your EV will. <laughs> it's getting late in the day. Yes. Next up, battery degradation is a thing. Just like your laptop or smartphone, over time, the maximum range your EV provides will slowly fall. It's important to be aware of this. However, I think the issue does get blown way out of proportion, as it's very easy to deal with this by capping how high you fill the battery and, of course, being responsible with DC fast charging. Additionally, manufacturers typically offer eight or 10 year battery warranties that usually guarantee the pack will still provide 75% of its full capacity. And really, that ain't too bad. Also, think about this. Combustion powered vehicles also lose efficiency and performance over time. They wear out too, especially if you aren't good with maintenance. Similarly, by level two charging at home and capping day-to-day -day charges to 80%, you can keep your battery in very good shape over the long haul. Next, when switching from gas to electric, it's critical to know how DC fast charging works because you will almost certainly be relying on it if you take a long road trip. Now, a few things to keep in mind. Generally, you wanna stop charging at about 80% because going past that point often takes forever and you're better off hitting the road and juicing up again later rather than waiting for the battery to hit 100 percent next use the charger that's right for your ev the chevy bolt for instance tops out at around 55 kilowatts 
Plugging into a 350 kilowatt charger doesn't make things go any faster, and it just annoys drivers with EVs that charge at a much higher rate, so please avoid doing that. And finally, don't always expect to hit the peak charging rate advertised on the cabinet. If other EVs are plugged in or the battery is a little bit cold, there's a good chance your vehicle will charge slower. Now, we have videos on all of these topics and many more, so check those out. And, of course, make sure you are subscribed to the EV Pulse YouTube channel. We're excited to be the navigator on your EV journey. Thanks for joining us. Okay, my next tip for drivers switching to an electric vehicle is to thoroughly plan your road trips or else. DC fast chargers are still nowhere near as common or reliable as gas stations, so plan out any long drives and your required charging stops so you don't end up stranded. There are many great services out there that will help you do this, and having a few backup stations in mind is not a bad idea either, as chargers break and good, reliable ones may be occupied by other EV drivers. And finally... I'll only take it back because you we will trip up. Um, <clears throat> let's just do it from okay, my next tip. We still have 14 people watching this. It's amazing. I don't know. I mean, thank you for joining us. We're just recording some stuff on the green screen, they testing out a new YouTube asleep. feature. They probably did fall asleep at their keyboards or their phones. Except the numbers, except yeah. the numbers increasing. So. Oh, no, now it's 15. Look at that. Yeah, look at that. All right, you ready? Okay, yeah. my next tip. Yep. Three, two, and one. Okay, my next tip for drivers switching to an electric vehicle is to thoroughly plan your road trips or else. DC fast chargers are still nowhere near as common or reliable as gas stations, so plan out any long drives and your required charging stops so you don't end up stranded. There are many great services out there that will help you do this, and having a few backup stations in mind is not a bad idea either, as chargers break and good, reliable ones may be occupied by other EV drivers. And finally, in my not-so-humble opinion, the single most important thing you need to do when switching to an electric vehicle is install a Level 2 charger. Yes, you can live without one of these, but putting one in at home or wherever you park is what allows you to take full advantage of the benefits EVs offer. You can juice up every night and have a full battery when it's time to head to work in the morning. We already covered this, but you pay way less for electricity than when DC fast charging. And depending on the vehicle and hardware you buy, some systems even support bi-directional charging, so during a power outage, you can run your house from the energy that's stored in your EV's battery. Get your garage ready for an EV now and enjoy the best experience from day one. All right, if you've been paying attention, say it along with me. First off, buy an EV that's eligible for tax credits. Get a vehicle with the most range that you can afford. Beware of old man winter. Double check those insurance rates and registration fees before signing the dotted line. Electrics will save you money on maintenance, except for tires. Consider the price of electricity before buying an EV. Be aware of battery degradation. Understand how DC fast charging works. Know that it's wise to thoroughly plan road trips. And lastly, install a Level 2 charger at home for the ideal EV experience. And if you're still leery about getting an electric, you might consider a hybrid instead. Click here to learn the advantages and disadvantages of each and what sets these two vehicle types apart. Uh, I have one graph I'd like to mm -hmm. recut. That's what I <coughs> figured. <laughs> So it didn't. So I I manually inserted an ad to see what would happen, and mm. the ad didn't run on the short shelf version. So where did it run? <laughs> I don't know. I'm not watching the live stream through mm. desktop. So gotcha. I don't know. But anyways, you want it from and finally, Ben? Yes, from and finally. Three, two, and one. And finally, in my not so humble opinion. The single most important thing you need to do when switching to an electric vehicle is install a Level 2 charger. Yes, you can live without one of these, but putting one in at home or wherever you park is what allows you to take full advantage of the benefits EVs offer. 
I mean, you can juice up every night and have a full battery when it's time to head to work in the morning. We already covered this, but you pay way less for electricity than when DC fast charging. And depending on the vehicle and hardware you buy, some systems even support bi-directional charging. So during a power outage, you can run your house from the energy stored in your EV's battery. Get your garage ready for an EV now and enjoy the best experience from day one. Okay, if you've been paying attention, say it along with me now. I guess That's so. good. Yep. Super duper. Um, hey. Hey, Ben, can you hear me too? Yes, I can. How difficult would it be to add a sentence that says, um, for the YouTube audience, that says, um, click on screen for our recommended, one of our recommended home chargers? Just so we can tag a YouTube oh, product yeah, and do that. Tag a YouTube product and sure. Also have an affiliate link in the description. Is that all right, Craig? If we that's fine. Okay. okay let's see where to put that, Craig. But um, that just feels so very obvious to drop that in. Yeah. So maybe. Um, yeah, after the get your garage ready for an EV now and enjoy the best experience from day one, uh, click on the screen now for uh, our recommended charger. Yeah, what one of our recommended say? chargers. Say again, Chad. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't hear what Ben said. Oh, he was asking what you said. Yeah. What oh, I said, yeah, no, that makes sense. Um, I'll fit your garage with one of our recommended char by clicking on the screen for one of our recommended chargers or yeah, that's perfect. Can you, can you see that on screen? Craig? I see the settings, oh. the app settings. Cause it's important to see that on the front. Yeah, it is. Sorry, chat room. The money guys in the chats are in the stream. So now does, can you see where it says, get your garage ready? I see. Okay. If you've been paying attention. I know. Okay, and get your garage ready. Yeah, there it is. It's All right. Higher. So, how do you want to reword that? Get your garage ready f for an EV now and enjoy the best experience from day one. In fact, click the link on screen to see some of our recommended level two chargers. In fact, click the link on screen or in the description bo box below to see to view our recommended charger. To view our recommended charger. Don't don't make it sound, you know. Don't make it sound. Uh, um. <clears throat> don't give them choices. Don't give people choices. So, like, just say, click on screen for our recommended charger and just leave mm -hmm. it at that. Okay. Then we'll leave it at and, that. And then when you cut that out, then you don't have to worry about cutting out the description box below from when we rerun this on MSN and oh, stuff. Oh, that's true. So, that'll be the easiest way to cut that. So, don't say the description box? Please. And just say, rec and view, our, view our recommended charger. Don't. Don't make it sound like we've got a bunch of them. I mean, we do. And for the people in the chat right now, <laughs> if they go to evpulse.com, they can view our recommended chargers. We're fond of the Juicebox 40. Um, the charge point's okay. We we like Emporia quite a bit. Um, and, uh, yeah, Wallbox is coming out with some new stuff, too, which we haven't had a chance to test yet. But So do you want it to say recommended charger singular or recommended chargers plural? Singular, please. If you are okay. recommended charger. All right. Are you still rolling, Ben? Yes, I am. Can you lower that just a little skosh? There you go. Three, two, and one. Get your garage ready for an EV now and enjoy the best experience from day one. Also, click the link on screen to check out our recommended level two charger. Okay. If you've been paying attention, say it along with me now. First off, buy an EV that's eligible for tax credits. Get a vehicle with the most range that you can afford. Does that work for you, Chad? Sounds good to me. All right. All right, All right we're cutting. Uh, any remaining questions or comments to address? Before please? we sign off, anything? Thank you all for joining us for the ride. Yeah, thanks all for joining us. PF Cutters just said something about uh, Stellantis adopting uh, NAX or J3400 with no mentions of Tesla. I mean, yes, you know, if you have a Max connector, Elon has said he will open the network up for non-Tesla EVs. So in order to support Max, you have to be able to su support that. Um, uh, 
Mirko says he's so happy he doesn't have to deal with the Charger Wars. Um, yeah, CCS2 Lucky. kind of just won out, but, you know. Um, I'll check this CCS2 for everyone. Actually, for what it's worth, Mirko, I like the NACS or the J3400 connector better. It's smaller. It's easier to maneuver. You get it plugged in right every single time. I find the CCS1 <laughs> and CCS2 connectors a little clunky, but I completely agree with you that, like... Just one charge connection standard is how it should be done. So, um, which we'll have very soon, end of the year. I mean, pretty much every EV at that point yep. will ship with a ship with yep. a next plug. Um, but yeah, I mean, my battery is getting a little bit low here, so I think I'm going to sign off on the live stream. But thank you all for joining us. We've got, of course, Mirko. Thank you from Northern Europe. PF Cutters, haven't seen you before in the chat or comments, but thank you for joining us. We've got Gorski C as well, Stefan Ogbach, and many other folks, if I haven't mentioned your name. <laughs> Who's Denisia Fabian? Your face inspires seriousness. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like Gorski says to go plug yourself into a supercharger, Craig. Oh, oh he PF... wants me to die? Is that what he's saying? Yes. And PF Cutters is from Trinidad. So there. From Trinidad. Welcome. Wow. Welcome, greetings. Um, yes, we see we have viewers. We have viewer from all over the world. <laughs> uh, we do focus mostly on North American content, but I would still encourage you folks to subscribe if you like if you like Craig's antics. Um, otherwise, we'll see y'all soon, Inch. Yep. Thanks, guys. See you later. Goodbye. <laughs>